Well, this is the beginning of uh, what may be a set of videos describing uh, some machinery and various gadgets and gizmos, I'm calling them, things that were made in the past. And uh, my machining work has been very minimal for many years now, but back about 25 years ago, I had a fairly reasonable machine shop, nothing like Keith Fenner. But uh, I did small scale work and uh, here we have a picture of the old shop back in England uh, which I left in the year 2000. This is actually part the way through clearing out before moving. And that was a nightmare I can tell you. Uh, figure one is on the end of the Little John machine which is something we're going to describe in the next video. Number two is an old shaper very old machine but uh, did some work on it and it was a very reliable machine for various things like cutting keyways and so on. Number three is the import drill press which I've still got and beyond that there's just a load of junk. <laughs> I keep using the word junk. You'll hear it over and over again. Here's uh, my old shop again and this was number two lathe. To the very left you can see the little John which is going to be described later and in fact in the last photograph which was very poor definition by the way uh, the Mifid had already been sold somebody had come and taken it anyway it was a nice little machine and uh, we built a clutch assembly for it which I'm going to try and show you a little bit about before we finish this video but just looking at the numbers there these were odd things of interest uh, number one I machined a block with some gears so that the carriage would run the correct direction. <laughs> In standard trim, if you wanted the carriage to go towards the headstock, you would rotate the hand wheel clockwise. And if you wanted to go back to the tailstock, you'd go anti-clockwise, which is totally counterintuitive. Uh, so this block and the gear you can see just by the number one uh, that reversed the motion there so that things were normal. Clockwise took you to the tailstock and uh, counterclockwise to the headstock. It meant far fewer mistakes. Uh, number two is the compound slide. Um, above number two is a four-way tool post which is very much designed after the fashion of the uh, one on the Little John which we'll show later. Number three that was uh, uh, an own made graduated collar because the uh, scale was, I forget what was there before, the scale wasn't much use. Now we're looking 180 degrees different, in other words we're at the uh, back of the lathe tail stocks on the left of the picture so we're behind the machine and this is to try and show the uh, clutch unit I've taken some footage of the engineering drawing for this clutch and I'll show that after the uh, still pictures are finished which may help explain it a bit more in case anybody finds it of interest uh, what you can see there within all the general mess that's around Number one is on each of the posts for what we called plumber blocks in those days, phosphor bronze, oilite type bearings. Uh, number two is a three step flat belt pulley that is hooked up to the drive on the lathe. The large aluminum pulley takes its drive from the rather old electric motor. Number three is a bar and fork unit which moves to the uh, the left and right which is responsible for engaging and disengaging the clutch unit and number four is the operating lever you can't see it but there's a, a ratchet and pull type system to keep it locked back against internal spring pressure the drawing may help clarify that this uh, photograph and the two that follow are pictures I took a long, long time ago just showing a selection of stuff that I'd made. I'm not going to go into major detail 
at the moment. Um, if we look at the next one, again a selection of pieces. Most of these things are going to be mentioned when I do the uh, subsequent videos. And the third one, again more pieces. Most of this will be discussed later in the hope that some things will be of interest to some people. Give you an idea of what this old fella used to do and use way back. Now we'll switch to uh, video mode and give this drawing a go in the hopes that it'll give a bit more information about that uh, clutch unit. Now before I left the UK in 2000 I got rid of a lot of machinery and one item was uh, my foot three and a half inch and one of the biggest modifications I did to it was making a clutch assembly and uh, this is partly visible in one of the rather poor pictures I have of it and in essence what we've got is a drive let's start from the left this is the uh, plan view that's one end of the main shaft which is a fossil bronze what we used to call a plumber block and here we've got stepped flat belt pulley going to the lathe here is the main drive pulley from the motor and what we have if you can see the dotted line here this is all made out of aluminum all this area uh, we've got a tapered section here which goes inside the flat belt pulley here which was also machined to a taper inside and uh, the section drawing will show things a bit better in a moment and then here we've got a fork assembly somewhere in here is a spring too I don't think it's showing and this part on the side here is a sliding linkage for engaging and disengaging via this lever here that's a pivot point so that goes this way or that way if it goes to the right it moves this out of engagement against spring pressure and uh, there's a locking facility on, on the uh, lever there that basically is oh and we've got a ratchet by the way there's a ratchet here which is uh, there's a little detent here and that holds it out of engagement so uh, to engage we have to actually just release that little paw let's move the camera now Alrighty, now uh, the uh, section, this helps a little bit more. Uh, so again we've got plumber block. Uh, you won't see, I don't think, just off. Hang on, let's see if it's on the picture. Uh, no, it's not quite on the picture. These two lines show the uh, angle 15 degrees. So there's the plumber block. There is the uh, flat belt pulley, machined inside to 15 degrees. The whole of this block, which actually was made up, the pulley and another block were made separate and joined. There's a th thin layer of leather adhering, <coughs> adhering to the inside of this. So you've got, it's a cone clutch, that's the easiest description. There's the pulley for the uh, drive from the motor. There's a bearing and another bearing. Then we've got the forks. The forks work within this uh, section here. So this is, if you like, this is um, like a thrust collar, thrust block. And then the fork is actuated by the uh, this piece of bar here, which has a handle on it. So when the fork is taken to the right we disengage the taper of the clutch and the drive no longer goes to the lathe and then finally if we can set the camera over just a bit all right 
This is uh, on the left of the plan drawing. This is an end view. So what you're looking at here is the main drive pulley. There you've got the forks, main shaft, there's a bearing, and I'm just trying to see whether this shows very clearly uh, because you're looking end on. So this doesn't show you a whole lot other than the fact that this is the fork unit that will pull the uh, clutch out of engagement. All right, just a little explanation on that and see if it shows up adequately. Just to give some idea of what was involved, it was a very interesting project and a lot of work, but in the end it did a good job and I think the guy who bought the uh, lathe in the end did all right out of it.